Here we have a push-pull style headlight switch, which is correct for a 47 to 59 GM truck, but you can really use it in any kind of car you want. It is actually really easy to wire, and if you pull it out just one notch, you get your rear parking lights and your front parking lights, and then you have your dashboard light, which is dimmable if you rotate the knob like this. From there, you can actually pull it out one more notch, and your front parking lights turn off, but your rear parking lights stay on, and then you have your headlights which turn on. So we're, right now we have the left headlight and the right headlight, and then we have a high beam switch, which turns on the high beam, so you got all four headlights turning on at once. You can obviously turn it off, and then push the switch off again. And today, I'm going to show you how easy it is to wire all this up in your car. So to start off, this headlight switch is rated at 20 amps, which means you can't have more than 20 amps flowing through this. So that means you have to add up all of your wattage and make sure that that is not going to exceed 20 amps, because if it does, not only are you going to pop the fuse, but you could actually cause damage to the switch, and you don't want to do that because nobody wants their car on fire. Now this headlight switch has six terminals on it. One of them is an input, and all the rest are outputs. Let's start with the input. That's this one labeled BAT. As you can imagine, it is power coming from your battery through a fuse, which is a 20 amp fuse because this thing can only handle 20 amps. You don't ever want to put a higher amperage fuse than that because then your switch will burn out and your fuse won't. So you could do actually a smaller amp than this. If you find out all of your headlights only add up to, I don't know, 13 amps, then you could actually use a 15 amp fuse here and it would be totally fine because you're not going to overload your headlight switch or the fuse. So this wire could actually come straight from a battery if you want all of this available all the time, or you could technically run it off of a master relay or a master fuse box, depending on how you want the whole thing wired. I have a bunch of other videos on that sort of stuff, so definitely check out my wiring playlist. For today, let's assume that it's wired straight to a battery. So that means this switch has power all the time, whether your car is on or off. Okay, so we have power coming in, and then we have five outputs. So let's go over those. Now this one here is not being used on this circuit, because this would probably be used to go to a dome light switch, so that when you open the door, there's power to the dome light switch, and therefore it turns on your dome light. But we don't have that dome light here or the dome light switch, so we're just leaving that empty. Next on the list is tail. It's labeled right here, and you can see it's this white wire that comes down here, and it splits off to both of these rear lights. Now, these lights are 2057 style bulbs, which have two filaments each. You can see these red wires are not being used for anything, but in a normal situation, you might use those for maybe your brake lights or your turn signals. Depending on what kind of vehicle this is wired into, and what style bulbs you have in the back of your vehicle, you'll either want to wire these up or not wire them up. Maybe you're using 1156 style bulbs, which only have two wires, and therefore these won't even exist on your car at all. But the short version is you have one wire coming out of the switch that goes and it splits off to both bulbs, and that's what powers up these, par these rear parking light bulbs. On the other side, you have a black wire, which is the ground. And the ground will actually just go right to the chassis of the vehicle, assuming your chassis is grounded. So we'll turn it on right now, and we'll show you how it works. You can see, as soon as we pulled out the switch just a little bit, it sent power out the white wire, and it turned on both of these bulbs. Now at the same time, you can see these front light bulbs are on too, so let's talk about those next. Now the parking lights in the front, they work the same way as the ones in the rear. You have an output right here, which is labeled park, and it goes out through the red wire, and it splits off to this red wire and this red wire. And then, of course, the other side of the bulbs is grounded, which comes over, and they both tie together, and they go down to the ground. And I have them all grounded to a negative terminal, but you would actually ground them right to the chassis of the vehicle. Now, right here, we have a terminal labeled dash, and that is where the power comes out and goes to your dashboard lights. Now, normally, the dashboard lights would have gauges, right? I was actually hoping to show it in the form of a gauge, but it turns out with all the light facing this board, it's really hard to see the light in the gauge. So I just pulled the bulb out of the gauge, and now you have this instead. Now this terminal right here is labeled the dash, and you can see there's power going out through the red wire to this bulb, 
the other side of the bulb is a ground. I just have it tied into these, which is then going to my ground, but you would just tie it right to a grounded surface on your chassis or your dashboard, depending on you know what works for you. And as I said, it is dimmable if you rotate this. So you can see the bulb is getting brighter and dimmer, depending on how much I turn it. If you do have multiple dash lights, you can just tie all of the red wires together and then ground all of the black wires and you'll have a whole series of dash lights that turn on and off depending on how you rotate this. And again, you just have to make sure that the whole switch doesn't exceed 20 amps. Now these bulbs, they basically don't draw much energy at all. And if you're concerned about it, you can always switch to LEDs because LEDs don't draw much amperage at all. So a little safer method of doing this, if you're concerned about overdrawing the amperage through this, is just swap all the bulbs to LEDs and it shouldn't be an issue. If you want to get a little nerdy about it, you could also just get yourself an amp gauge and hook it up to some wires and see what it is. You can see my battery's running a little low, so I'm only at 10 volts. But if we crank this up, you can see we're at 1.6 amps. And then we'll do the headlights, 2 amps, high beams, we're at 7.8 amps, 7.6 amps. Now these are just 2057 bulbs, like I said before. So headlights are gonna be more than this, and you're gonna to need to actually do the math, figure out how many watts uh, each headlight can be, and then convert that to amps, and you'll get your total. It's actually pretty easy to do, super easy math. It's stuff you learned in like fourth or fifth grade. Now the headlights are actually easier than they look. We have four of them. Two of them are low beams, two of them are high beams. You can see the low beams are on the outsides and they have three wires each. The centers are high beams and they have two wires each. And then of course there's the high beam switch, which is normally mounted to your floor pan and you can snap it on and off with your foot. All right, so right here, there is a head terminal. And that's this yellow wire, which comes out and goes to the center point of your dimmer switch or high beam switch depending on what you want to call it and then we have the red wire which is on the the bottom side here which goes out and it connects to all four of the headlights the red wire on all four headlights so that's going to be your high beam wire so when you turn the high beams on this thing is going to be powered up and it's going to send power to all four bulbs now the white wire will get power when we turn on the low beams. So right now the dimmer switch or high beam switch is set to low beams. And you can see they're sending power out the white wire, which connects to this low beam bulb, and it jumps all the way over and goes to this low beam bulb. Now when we flip the switch here, you can see it actually swaps the filaments in the low beams, and then it turns on the high beams. So now the white wire is not having any power right now, which you can see if we undo it entirely. And there's power coming out the red wire, which splits off and goes to every single headlight bulb, assuming you have four headlights. And then of course, if we reconnect the low beam, we can turn off the high beams and we're back to the low beams again. Now, if by chance your vehicle only has two headlights, it doesn't have four, then you can just not wire in these two, like this, we'll just remove the bulbs, and this is how it will work. You see, you still have your high beams and your low beams, and these two just don't exist on your car. So let's put these back in. Parking lights can be connected to turn signal lights. It can be two filament, it could be single filament. There's just a million different ways to hook up the parking lights to turn signals or brake lights and turn signals. There's a whole bunch of different ways to hook those up and I have a ton of videos on all of those. So be sure to check out my other videos, my playlist specifically, because you'll actually find a whole bunch of different ways to wire your parking lights and your brake lights into a variety of different bulbs so that it'll work for your scenario. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a like, maybe even share it with a friend, and hopefully, I'll see you on the next one.